In this lecture, we want to continue our discussion of discrete random variables by talking about something called the expected value, or the expected value is also synonymous with the mean of a discrete random variable. Okay, so we have two objectives in this uh, lecture. The first is we want to compute the mean of a discrete random variable. And then what we want to do is we want to interpret the mean of this discrete random variable. So like, well, what, what, is, it, what is the meaning of the, uh, the average or mean of a discrete random variable? Okay, so first let's talk about how you compute the mean of a discrete random variable, and it's, a, and it's a pretty straightforward formula. So the mean of a discrete random variable is given by the following. So it's mu sub x. So this right here is read as the mean of the random variable x. All right, and it's equal to, remember this is the sum of you take each possible x value, so these, this x is the, the values of the random variable, and you multiply it by its corresponding probability, all right? And then you just sum up all those values. So as I said, where x is the value of the random variable and p of x is the probability of observing that specific value. So it's just the sum of each possible value of x times its corresponding probability. Okay. Remember, recall this one here, all right? This was um, the number of movies streamed on Netflix each month by households with children under one years of age. This was the uh, probability distribution from a previous lecture. So we see that the possible values of x are 0 to 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and these are their corresponding probabilities of each possible value. All right, so let's compute the mean. Okay, so just from the previous slide, the mean mu sub x is the sum of each x value times its corresponding probability. All right, so I have the formula right here. So all you're going to do is you're going to take 0 multiply it by 0 0.06. Then you're going to add to it. You're going to take 1, multiply it by 0 0.58. You're going to add to it. You're going to take 2 times 0 0.22, 3 times 0 0.10, 4 times 0 0.03, and 5 times 0 0.01. So, and then all you're going to have to do is just compute this sum. And if you do, you'll see that the average or the mean is 1.46. Now you'll notice looking at the table um, you actually can't even have a value of 1.46, right? You can have a value of 1 or 2, but that's okay. Like, if you think about it, suppose two students take a test and one student gets an 80 and one student gets a 90. The average is still an 85, even though no student actually got an 85, okay? So it's the same with this. You can get a, a value of mu sub x that's not an actual value on the table. That's okay, all right? So what we're saying is, look, you know, based on this probability distribution, on average, okay, households with children under one year of age stream 1.46 um, movies on Netflix a month. So exactly like, what's another interpretation of this, okay? So this right here, this mu sub x, you can also think, think of it as a long run average. Okay, a long run average. So suppose the following data here just represents the number of movies streamed on Netflix by 100 randomly selected households. Okay, if I ask you to compute the mean number of, excuse me, this a little bit of a typo here, mean number of movies streamed All right, you would just take all the possible values all right, in this table here, you'd sum them all up and divide by 100, and you'd see that you'd get 1.46. Okay, so it's the same as here. So what's going on here is, is that when I say a long-run average, as the number of trials of the experiment increase, like if you were to do this with five households or four households or 20 households, you, you might not get a value of 1.49. But the mean number of movies streamed
all right, approaches the mean of the probability distribution. So as you can see here, as I, as I add more and more observation to the data set, the mean's gonna converge or get closer, okay, and closer to that mean of the probability distribution. And that's what it's meant by it's a long run average. All right, let's do another one here. Okay, let's compute the mean for the random variable x where x represents the results on a die roll, a six-sided die. Okay, so I want to compute the average of a die roll. Okay, so just remember it's the sum of each x value times their corresponding probability. Okay, so you're going to take 1, you're going to multiply it by 1 sixth, then you're going to add to it 2 times 1 sixth, plus 3 times 1 sixth, plus 4 times 1 sixth, plus 5 times 1 sixth, and then plus 6 times 1 sixth. Okay? Well, 1 times 1 sixth is 1 sixth, 2 times 1 sixth is 2 sixth, 3 times 1 sixth is 3 sixth, 4 times 1 sixth is 4 sixth, 5 times 1 sixth is 5 sixth, and 6 times 1 sixth is 6 sixths. So I, I didn't reduce the fractions here because now they all have a common denominator and I can add them up. So 1 plus 2 is 3, 6, 10, 15. This is 21 over 6, which is 3.5. So what I'm saying here is the mean of a die roll is 3.5. You'll notice you actually can't get a value of 3.5. But what, what I'm saying here is, is this is the long run average. of repeated attempts of the probability experiment. Okay, it's the long run average. If you kept rolling a dice and you recorded what you got every time you did it and then you took an average of all your die rolls, if you did it a thousand, ten thousand times, you'd see that the average was 3.5. Okay, that's, that's what this is going on here. All right, so let's give it a little bit another interpretation of this. So because the mean of a random variable represents what you would expect to happen in the long run, as I've been saying, it's also referred to as the expected value. Okay, and we denote this as E of X, okay, of the random variable. So when you see this, it's just the expected value of the random variable x. And the expected value is, is literally just another way of saying the mean, mu sub x, okay? Just another way of naming it. And it's still the same formula. It's the sum of the x values times their corresponding probability. But what's great about the expected value is I'm gonna introduce some uh, real world examples to this, okay? So uh, a great example of um, this expected value here, this, this long run mean, um, is pricing insurance policies. So a term life insurance policy will pay a beneficiary a certain sum of money upon the death of a policyholder. So a term life, in pol term life insurance policy means it's, it's good for however long the term is. Okay, so you can have a one year, two term, three years, you know, but after the term is up, the life insurance policy goes away. So these policies have premiums that must be paid annually. Okay, suppose a life insurance company sells a $250,000 one year term life insurance policy, so it's only good for one year, to a 49 year old female for $530. Okay, so what that means is if the female dies, they have to pay their beneficiary $250,000. Okay, but to get the policy, all right, the female, the 49-year-old female had to pay $530. All right, so according to the National Vital Statistics Report, the probability the female will survive the year is 0.99791. Okay, so that's really good. All right, it's over, you know, it's close to 100%, but not exactly. So let's compute the expected value of the policy to the insurance company. So in the long, so what this means is in the long run, if they keep selling this policy, okay, to 49 year old females, how much do they expect to make in the long run off each policy on average? Okay, well, there's two things that could happen, okay? 
the individual could survive, okay? So if the individual survives, the company makes $530, okay? And this is the corresponding probability that that individual survives, okay? So the only other thing the company cares about is if the individual does not survive, so if the company dies. So survives is the person lives, and this is the person dies. So this is the probability the person dies, okay? We got that from one minus the probability they live, right? And it's, it's just equal to that. Now, the next thing is if the person dies, how much money does the company lose, okay? Because we know if the, if the person lives, or in survives, they get to keep the $530, okay? And it's a common mistake to say, you know, oh, if the, if the person dies, the company is gonna lose $250,000. But that's not exactly the case, right? Because the per, they've, already, they've already got the $530, okay? So what they're really gonna lose is they have the $530 already profit. So then you're gonna subtract away the check they're gonna write Okay, so the check they're going to write to the beneficiary is $250,000. So $530 minus $250,000. Companies only, only, but the company will lose $249,470. So the expected value then, you take the money they'll make, all right, if the person survives times the corresponding probability they'll survive. You'll add to it the money they'll lose. Okay, don't forget the negative sign when you plug this in your calculator. Times the probability the person will die. And if you plug this in your calculator, the expected value for the company is $7.50. So this times this plus this times this gets you 700, or excuse me, $7.50. So this is positive expected value. It's not much, but it's still positive, okay? So the, the company should actually, so as long as it's a positive expected value, this is good for the company. Okay. Um, let's do another one. Uh, so I like um, to do casino games every once in a while in this class. So I know we've talked about the game of craps before, but... So the casino game of roulette consists of a circular board, okay? And this is what the, the board looks like here. And you might have seen um, roulette like, uh, you know, in a movie or if you've ever walked through a casino, you, you've seen a roulette wheel that looks like this. Okay, and so what's on the, the wheel, okay? So on a circular board, it has 18 red numbers, okay? You can see the red numbers in here. 18 black numbers, you can see the black numbers denoted. And it has two green numbers, zero and double zero, okay? So how many total numbers are there on a roulette wheel? The total number on a roulette wheel? There's 38 total numbers on there. There's 18 and 18 is 36, plus two gets you 38. So if you look over here, okay, on a roulette wheel, you can make this bet on the board here, okay? And so what you can do is on a single spin of the wheel, a player can make a $10 bet on a red number coming up. So what that means is you'll spin the wheel and the ball will bounce around in the game of roulette. And then when the wheel stops spinning, the ball lands in one of these circles and that's the number that comes up on the roulette wheel, okay? So if you, if you say, I want to bet all the red numbers, as long as any single one of these red numbers, the ball lands in here, on all, where all these numbers are, you win, okay? So if a red number, and you're going to bet $10 on that happening. If a red number does come up, okay, the player wins $10. If a red number does not come up, okay, the player loses his or her $10, okay? So let's compute the value of the bet for the player. And I, I love doing this because maybe you've heard the adage before, um, the house always wins. You know, this is an adage about um, casinos like, uh, you know, how do casinos make money? And they always say, well, the house always wins. What that means is the casinos always win in the long run, okay? So what I'm going to see here when we do this is this $10 bet is actually going to have negative expected value for the player. In the long run, the player is going to expect to lose money doing this. 
Okay, so there's only two things that could happen, right? The, the person can win the bet or the person can lose the bet. If the person wins the bet, they get $10. If the person loses the bet, they lose their $10. Well, there's 38 total, um, total numbers on the wheel, okay? And there's 18 red numbers, okay? So the probability the person wins is 18 out of 38. Okay, they lose if anything else comes up. So they lose if any of the black numbers or the green numbers come up, of which now there are 20. So the probability they lose is 20 out of 38. So to find the expected value, you take the probability they're going to win, 10, multiply it by the probability they win. You add to it um, how much they lose, which would be minus $10, times the probability they lose. And if you plug this into your calculator here, you'll end up getting minus 53 cents, okay? So this is negative expected value. Which is bad for the player, but good for the casino. So what this means is in the long run, the player expects to lose money every time they play this game, okay? Which is you know really good news for the casino. <laughs> All right, class, I, uh, I hope this was a good introduction to you for the mean or expected value of a discrete random variable.